So, what's up y'all? I'm Jackie Summel. I am part of the 2020 Creative Capital Cohort. I'm really excited about telling you a little bit about all the medicine that's in your kitchen. Um, and this is... Brianne. Louder. Brianne. Brianne Shaw, my amazing goddaughter, who's going to help me um, and continue to inspire me to do better in the world and better on this video. So, um, I think for me, you know, I'm working on a project called the Prisoners Apothecary, which is organized around healthcare sovereignty and prison abolition. And what feels important to me is that we, we uh, reconnect with our humanity through our relationship to plants and food um, and herbs. And in doing so, we really empower ourselves to see the global crisis of mass incarceration and to act on behalf of decarceration or abolition. Um, and I think sometimes there's like a mysticism that comes with herbs or, or this idea of needing to go to like an, a, an apothecary or an herb shop and buy like 20 bottles of tinctures and other things to get well. Um, when in reality, it's always, it's always been with us from, um, from the beginning of time. Like plants have been our biggest allies and our friends and our supporters. And believe it or not, we have a lot of medicine in our kitchen even if we don't have things like ashwagandha and golden seal and skull cap. Um, so I was hoping that Brian could introduce you to a couple of the more popular um, plants that are in our kitchens that are our healers. And, um, and, and one of the ideas is that you know, the framework of this video is such that you can buy all of this stuff with an EBT card, um, with food stamps. You can buy all of this stuff, most of it in your corner store. You don't need to go to a Whole Foods or to a farmer's market, although organic is preferred because there's less chemicals in between you and your healing. Um, but um, most of this stuff is in my kitchen, it's in her kitchen, it's in the kitchen upstairs, it's in my neighbor's kitchen, and so maybe Brianne can introduce us to our plant friends today. All right, this is lavender, this is rosemary, this is sage, this is oregano, oregano thyme, and mint. What about in the bowl? In the bowl, there is lemon, ginger, onion, and garlic. Buku garlic. Buku garlic, as much garlic as we can get in our body. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. So Brian, where did where did these come from? The garden. The garden. And the idea is that you know if you're you can buy this like in an actual like little salt shaker or bottle or whatever, dried oregano, dried thyme, rosemary. But you can also grow them in window boxes. So we have an abundant, gigantic garden, which you don't need, right? The solitary gardens is like oh, half an acre. Um, and you can do most of these in window boxes and the medicine is the same. So there's so many different things we could be thinking about in terms of healing um, from what we have in our kitchen. But what feels important to me is to think about the affects of COVID-19 and living with it, right? And so there are two things um, that we wanted to focus on, we decided we would focus on. Do you remember what they are? Yes, anxiety and immunity. Anxiety and immunity. And there's a bit of a play on words there because we're gonna make some tea for both anxiety to mitigate anxiety and tea to help boost our She's used it many times in different recipes. Do you want to tell them a little bit about it? I don't really know that much about it, but I mostly use uh, ginger for when, because uh, I sing a lot, and it just helps to clear my voice, clear my throat, like just open it up a lot. It really, it really helps. Nice one. So like when you get nervous, like before you're about to perform, to a live audience or maybe make a video with your crazy god mom. <laughs> Where do you feel your anxiety? Mostly in my stomach. In your stomach. Mm -hmm. Me too. 
And ginger really affects like the stomach, the throat, everything coming up. So you can think of it as like um, the area of the body when you're feeling anxiety. Ginger helps to like soften that um, and help calm your anxiety. And one thing I will say is like, you know, we're talking about um, making teas because they're really accessible, they're really effective. And I think there's something to the ritual that is part of self-care. So what I do um, is every night I will make my tea for the next day. And the herbalist will call this a hot infusion. It's really just tea. Um, so I will put in whatever herbs I want, like if it's thyme and mint and ginger, I'll put them in. I'll boil some water, steep it for five minutes, and then I pour it into a larger bottle so that we can drink it all day. Um, and, then, and then repeat. So you could get at a, from this little teapot, you could easily fill one of these gallon jars. And then I'm drinking it all day. What is important is that I do this every day, that every day we're creating a tea that is really um, in relationship to what we're trying to treat, whether or not it's boosting our immunity or combating our anxiety. Um, and so the first tea that we're gonna make today is mint ginger. Very simple, but super, super powerful. Um, so Brian is gonna start by taking the mint leaves and just pulling them down. These are fresh from the garden, putting them in the kettle. That's cool. I'm gonna grab hot water. And one thing that's nice, I'll just be talking while you do this um, and annoying you, but <laughs> one thing that's nice about using fresh herbs is that, now smell your fingers. It's nice, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're actually absorbing the plant medicine when you're using fresh herbs into your skin. Um, and mint is antimicrobial, so it's like something that you could actually wash your hands with. You um, think about mint in your soaps. Um, it is calming, and much like ginger, it'll work on the stomach. So we're actually getting a double boost here of um, immunity and anxiety um, tea, um, but this one is really focused on anti-anxiety. And you can use fresh herbs, or you can use dry. The, with fresh herbs, you can do a cold infusion, so you can use cold water, just put all of the plants inside a jar, um, cold water on top, let it sit overnight, and then pour it out in the morning or strain it in the morning. But if you're gonna use dry herbs, like the, oh, <laughs> we put it on pizza. I still don't remember. Oregano, or the, rosemary, thyme, thyme, thyme. Or the, rosemary. If you're gonna use any of the dried herbs, you wanna use hot water. Hot water, dry herbs, cold water, or hot water, fresh herbs. Okay, that's awesome. And then she already cut up some ginger, but she likes to use this really big knife. So go ahead, just cut one more. <laughs> oh my God, I can't find it. Okay, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. And then we will put the ginger in there. And then hot water. Literally, this is it. So this will sit. <laughs> oh my God. So this has been sitting for about plus or minus five minutes, long enough for the dog to pee. <laughs> uh, and so now this is hot, but what Brianna will do is slowly pour it into this container and we'll just rinse, wash, repeat. But again, what we're doing is we're making a tea that we can drink all day. And that tea is mint and ginger. And that will help us with our anxiety, that will be a calming effect. Um, if you decided that you wanted to add, these are classic teas, if you wanted to add something called yarrow, which is a little outside of the grocery store, but you find yarrow growing wild everywhere, and 
elderflower. So elderflower, yarrow, mint, ginger is like a classic antiviral, flu-fighting, cold-fighting tea. And you can do that hot. There's tons more in there. Hot or cold. Actually, let's do a taste test and prove to them how delicious it is. Okay. Um, oh, I was about to say something. Ginger and mint. Ginger mint. And it's hot. But we, I like to drink it cold. I like it hot. It's, it's, it's hot. And then once this cools down, you carry it around with you, whatever, put it in your kid's thermos. Super good, like especially for young people um, because it helps you focus because you're not as wired. It's like it brings your energy down. So when you have eight weeks worth of COVID catch-up work <laughs> to do and you're feeling anxious, maybe a little ginger mint tea to accompany mm -hmm. that is good. Um, and it tastes good and it's not contraindicated. So that means you could take it with any medication that you're already on. Yeah, that means that I can take my Xanax and have mint ginger tea. <laughs> so just a quick review. Um, the tea we just made from our kitchen, kitchen materials is ginger and mint. And if we wanted to super boost it, like if we start to feel a woo coming on, we will add yarrow and <clears throat> elderflower. Elder. <laughs> this shit grows, you know, this all yeah. over the yard. So this grows like a weed in Louisiana. And some of you might recognize this. This is um, purple coneflower called echinacea. We also dry this out and we use the petals inside our tea for a little bit of an immuno boost, but that's fancy. That's some bougie. <laughs> uh, but the what? But the plant that I love the most, which also grows in a planter or in a window box, is this one. Smell it. Lemon balm. Say it again. Lemon balm. Lemon balm. Balm. The balm. No. It is the balm. <laughs> And so if I was reduced to having one plant every day, one tea, one thing growing, it would be the bomb, lemon bomb. Rose. Rose for her, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but lemon bomb is really good for calming your nerves. It is antiviral, um, it is antioxidant. And there's another really big word that I'm missing here, but it basically, it's like the more you drink, the better you feel. It's a cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. Seriously, and it tastes delicious. So actually, let's pour this one out. And I made lemon balm last night, and you tell me what you think of this. Rosemary, near and dear to my heart. 
So the plant rosemary is organized around remembrance and memory. And so there's a lot of rosemary sort of depicted in um, drawings of lost loved ones. Um, you can think of rose rosemary as really like a, a strong plant. It grows almost anywhere. It can withstand drought. It can withstand flooding. It's got such a strong smell. Antiviral, antimicrobial, getting that lemon balm in. Yeah. Um, but think of rosemary for clearing your anything from the head up. So memory, mind, focus, mm. ELA homework, <laughs> um, but also sinuses, throat, etc. So you can make a tea out of that. It's very, very strong. So I recommend balancing it with something a little bit softer, like mint, or maybe not steeping it as long. What do we got next? Sage. Boom! Sage. So sage is a really nice one, antimicrobial, antiviral, but also with like rosemary, and they're in the same family, sage will be good for clearing your mind, um, reconnecting you to memory, mm -hmm. um, clearing your sinuses, your throat, your chest. And again, these are all recommendations for teas. Go on. Oregano. <laughs> Oregano. Oregano. <laughs> So you can pay like 30 bucks for a dropper full of oregano oil and like fight all your colds and flus and all that shit. And you can do that. Or you can just get some dried oregano and make tea and, and drink a few cups every day. So same affects, antimicrobial, antiviral. And then? Thyme. Thyme. So thyme is actually one of the most popular plants chosen by the solitary gardeners because of the play on the names. So time and spending time incarcerated. And so we are growing quite a bit of time in, in many different kinds. And one of the things <clears throat> about time that is really nice and relative to the time that we are in mm. is that time is for your lungs. Um, and it is a really good, it's really good plant medicine for coughs. Um, especially if you have a lot of stuck kind of mucus and you're trying to get it out, thyme will help facilitate that. And it's really tasty. So you can also add these herbs to your food or you can make tea. My suggestion is the tea because it's very immediate. You do hot or cold, be drinking it all day and, and then be a better person, <laughs> for real. So fire cider is like the new hot thing. It's kind of, um, you know, people are selling bottles like this for 12 to $18 of fire cider. And it's something that is so easy to make and obviously so tasty. It tastes like medicine. It, it, it tastes like burning sensation. Hence like the name. Um, it tastes like apple cider just with salt. Mm, not exactly. A little more flavor than that. So in every batch of fire cider, there's a number of different ways you can make it. Brian just named one of it. Clutch is ACV apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Bragg's is awesome. If you have picky, kind of snobby, um, sweet tasting, <laughs> sweet loving humans in your house, honey, just add a lot of honey. Honey has all of the same qualities as your onions many of the same qualities as your onions and your garlic, but they'll, your kids will eat the shit out of it. There you go. Go ahead and shoot it. Um, so for basic fire cider, we're gonna go ACV, we're gonna go onions, garlic, fire, so your hot pepper, you choose your hot pepper and the hotness, and then 
your 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 jam. Oh. Ginger. Ginger. And then um, any kind of horseradish. So you can choose horseradish that is fresh. You could choose horseradish that is powdered. Horseradish that is in a jar. Creamed. <laughs> you don't want cream because yeah. that, that would be disgusting. <laughs> um, and then what you do is you basically cut all of that up. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about the qualities of this plant magic. So onions and garlic during times of plague are going to be your best friends. So they are so, so, so strong in flavor and power. And you could think of, I know, so cute puppy. You can think of onion and garlic as like, not necessarily an expectorant, but as things that will make you sweat. So they break your fever, they draw the toxins out, they help keep you healthy. So these are all immunoboosting. And they make you cry. And they, and they make you cry, as does the current state of politics. <laughs> um, okay, so Brianne's gonna cut them up. And then catch you. No! <laughs> And so you're just putting this inside your crock pot 
water up to there, the lid is off, three hours, and you've got quick fire cider. Or you got nothing but time on your hands, you want to make big batches of this, like you could go 32 ounce, 64 ounce, giant batches. The bigger, the more medicine you'll have in the long run. And then you're letting that sit four weeks. And then after four weeks, you're going to strain it. And that is a very basic, not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> I got it, I got it. So that is it also really simple. Um, so when you strain, you sure as shit can. <laughs> you're just going to pour into another wide mouth jar. I'll hold this part and make it a little easier. And so what Brianna is doing is just straining out another version of fire cider that we, oh, close, that we made um, over six weeks ago. And this version, um, we've added all kinds of herbs, that's oregano, and then we also used oranges, some citrus fruits, some extra garlic. And then what we're gonna do, when we're finished, like when all of the um, the material comes out, yeah. Okay, not a chance. Okay, just hold it there for now. You want to press, so you press the green material into your um, fire cider, and then um, we have another jar of fire cider, and we saved ourselves like forty bucks. Way better than whiskey. <laughs> okay, quick review. So just a reminder, we have so much medicine in our kitchens for anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antimicrobial, antioxidant, so much medicine for well-being, emotionally and physically. And what we found in our kitchen today was lavender, rosemary, sage, oregano and thyme and then we had plenty of onions ginger garlic hot peppers um, mint which is a nice one if you can grow it in a garden box and then my favorite which is an added bonus lemon balm <laughs> thank you so much i hope this was entertaining and useful and um, light and uplifting and brings you a sense of joy and hope. May all beings be happy and free.